I want you to think of how you start your typical day. You wake up in the morning, wash your face, hopefully brush your teeth, and if you're really trying to impress your dentist, you floss. Some of us might grab coffee to go on our way to work, and if you're a horrible chef like me, you run out and grab lunch. Now, picture this sequence again, but this time, think about the items that you touch and are surrounded by, and just how many of those things are plastic. Your bottle of face wash, your toothbrush, your tube of toothpaste, your pack of floss, the lid on your coffee cup, the container holding your lunch, and the plastic utensils they probably gave you to go with it. All of these plastic items, and I did not even walk us down an imaginary aisle in the grocery store, because with that list, and some of the most creatively ridiculous uses of plastic, <laughs> you would be sitting here listening to me all day. I mean, seriously, whose idea was it to individually plastic wrap potatoes? Companies want us to believe that there's no way to break society's single-use plastic habit. But that's because right now, companies give us little choice. It's nearly impossible to find plastic-free versions of your everyday items in the average store, which means going plastic-free often involves making your own toothpaste, deodorant, and so on. If you can't manage this, you're stuck purchasing the plastic wrap versions companies push into our hands. Enough is enough until companies stop using so much plastic, a toxic, wasteful, and persistent pollutant to our planet, this problem will not go away. 17.6 billion pounds. That is the amount of plastic scientists estimate enter the oceans every year. What does 17.6 billion pounds even look like? Well, it's roughly equivalent to dumping a garbage truck full of plastic into the oceans every minute. You might be thinking, well, I recycle, so if everyone recycled like I do, our oceans wouldn't be choking on plastic. And that is exactly what companies producing and using tons of plastic seem to want you to think. Now that companies have finally started to acknowledge their role in the plastic problem, due to the fact that their names are found washing ashore on plastic food wrappers and plastic bottles, they're proclaiming recycling as a solution to our problem. But their recycling promise won't cut it. Here's why. Out of all plastic waste ever generated, all 6.9 billion tons of it, guess how much was actually recycled? 9%. That's it. That means the vast majority, a whopping 91%, was either incinerated, sent to a landfill, or ended up polluting our natural environment, including our oceans. Everywhere you look, there are countless items packaged in plastics, or stray bags floating through city streets. The reality is, plastic is everywhere. It's been found floating at the surface of the sea, washing up on the world's most remote coastlines, melting out of Arctic sea ice, and even sitting at the deepest point of the ocean floor, nearly seven miles beneath the surface. Plastic has become an unavoidable part of life, not just for us, the humans that introduce plastics to the world, but for marine life as well. And the list of marine animals harmed by plastic pollution grows all the time. Just recently, there was a report of a whale washing up dead in the Philippines after ingesting 88 pounds of plastic. And this is far from the first time something like this has happened. Scientists estimate that over 60% of whale and dolphin species have ingested plastic debris, along with over half of the world's sea turtles and 90% of seabird species. Even zooplankton, tiny marine organisms that form the base of the ocean food chain, are eating plastic. After ingesting microscopic bits of plastic in the ocean, some are eaten by larger creatures like fish, 
which is how plastic can work its way up the food chain and onto our plates. But even if you're not a fan of seafood, plastic is still finding its way into the things that you eat. Everything from salt to honey to water to beer has been found to contain microplastics. We are eating plastic. We are drinking plastic. That much is undeniable. But there are still questions that remain, like just how much plastic are we eating? Or even more concerning, how is our plastic diet affecting our health? Scientists continue to study the potential health effects that plastics and their associated chemicals are having on us. And the problem with plastic is that it never really goes away. Although it may fragment into smaller and smaller pieces, once it's in the environment, most never fully breaks down. So how do we keep plastic, this source of pollution that never really goes away, out of our oceans? We need companies to make less of it. Unfortunately, industry doesn't want to make less plastic. It wants to make more, using the promise of recycling as its excuse. But the truth that companies don't want you to hear is that relying entirely on recycling without reduction just won't work. Let's think hypothetically. If every single person recycled every single plastic item, you'd think that plastic wouldn't still end up in our oceans, right? If only, here's what you may not know about recycling. Not all plastic that goes into the bin actually gets recycled. Some is, but a lot of what's recycled is actually downcycled or turned into less valuable products. Some is disposed or lost in the process, and some is exported. Exported from countries like the US to others whose waste infrastructure is considered less robust than our own, which means the plastic we thought was being recycled here in the States could end up in a landfill or in the oceans on the other side of the globe. Why? because it's cheaper to ship the problem to distant shores than to take responsibility and manage it at home. We export so much plastic that some countries are no longer accepting our low-value plastic waste. They have enough of their own to deal with. Companies know this. They also know that their anticipated production rates will outpace recycling. The amount of plastic going into our oceans will increase and it will accumulate. Relying entirely on recycling to fix this problem we've created would be like bailing out a sinking ship without even bothering to plug the hole. The fact that tons and tons of plastics are entering our oceans is proof that our current system is broken. Plastic production has far outpaced waste management's ability to keep up. How could this have happened? Because plastic's largest market Packaging, a sector that grew rapidly when industry decided to shift from reusable to single-use containers, starting in the 1950s, the beginning of throwaway living. Around 40% of all plastic produced today is used for packaging to create items labeled as disposable single-use plastics. But single-use plastics are flawed by design. They use a material made to last forever to produce items designed to be thrown away. Think about that for a second. It just doesn't make sense. Using a material engineered to last forever to produce an item designed to be thrown away. And single-use plastics have consistently ranked among the top 10 most commonly found items collected at cleanups worldwide. That list includes plastic bottles and caps, plastic bags, straws, takeout containers. Our plastic wrap world is clearly unsustainable. We need industry to break their single-use plastic habit. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't do our part to minimize our individual plastic footprints. We can and should refuse single-use plastics whenever possible. I mean, at the very least, choose the potato that is not wrapped in plastic. <laughs> but have any of you ever requested a drink with no straw and received one anyway? I have, and 
I'm known by my friends and family as the plastics police. <laughs> Even actively trying to avoid plastic doesn't always work. Individual action just isn't enough to solve the problem. Since I began speaking to all of you, around 300,000 pounds of plastic has entered our oceans. That's equal to the weight of a blue whale, the largest animal to ever exist on planet Earth, made entirely of plastic. Until companies change the way they produce, package, and sell our products, societal change will slowly lag behind and more plastics will enter our oceans. Companies can start to solve this problem by giving us plastic-free choices and not forcing single-use plastic into all our lives. And you can help with this too by joining groups like Oceana and demanding that companies break free from plastic, a global movement dedicated to stopping plastic pollution. And some companies are starting to listen to our demand for change by moving beyond recycling commitments and eliminating single-use plastics, or implementing reusable and refillable delivery systems. Just imagine if every container currently used once and then thrown away could instead be returned, washed, and used again and again. The opportunity for innovation is vast, limited only by companies' willingness to change. Of course, I hope that you feel inspired to take action and reduce single-use plastics in your daily lives. But if we want a real, large-scale, and lasting reduction in the devastating effects plastics are having on our environment, if we don't want to continue to see news of whales washing up, bellies filled with plastic bags, if we don't want to see entire coastal communities and countries drowning in plastic waste, if we want our oceans to have a future, if we want to have a future, we must demand corporate change. Thank you.